Amen. 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 Good morning and peace to you all. My name is Reverend Dr. Masia Evans, and on behalf of Dr. Rios and our contextual thinking class, I welcome you to this chapel service on this rainy morning. We are so very grateful to be here, but we're also grateful for the rain. Amen. Amen. We're also grateful that this is election day, and yes. many of us have been able to um, cast our ballots like a prayer in hopes for what we want to see for our country. But we're also grateful to be able to have this opportunity around about the midday to be able to, to pause a bit and as a body corporately breathe and take the time to renew our connection to the sources of our lives. As you'll see later today, we'll be engaging with the book, The Color Purple, but for now, and before we do our, our land and ancestors acknowledgement, I invite you to take a breath with me. And in that breath, with gratitude, we prayerfully honor the presence of God that is already with us today. Therefore, there's no need for an invocation, but an acknowledgement. Amen? Amen. 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 As we begin this time of sacred celebration, together in physical presence and connected through virtual presence, we must acknowledge first that we are standing on holy ground. And we acknowledge that we are standing in the presence of a great cloud of witnesses who surround us with the testimony of their faithful journeys, Ashe. We acknowledge that the Pacific School of Religion occupied land in Wu Chung, the unceded territory of the Chuchenyo, speaking Ohlone people, the successors of the sovereign Verona Band of Alameda County. We acknowledge that among the great cloud of witnesses, we honor are those who were the first stewards of this land whose umbilical cords are buried in this land and whose DNA is in this soil, and we pour libations for them. Ashe. We understand that we and all members of the Berkeley community continue to benefit from the seizure, occupation and use of this land, which was and continues to be of great importance to the Muwekma Ohlone tribe and other familial descendants of the Verona Band. And as we pour libation for those indigenous ancestors, we also take time to honor those whose lives and labor and sacrifice made it possible for us to be in this place, in this time, those who seeded into this edifice, as well as those who could not freely enter this edifice or other institutions of higher education or excess. We pour libation for them all. Ashe. And because we are the beneficiaries of the fruits of this land and the creation care of its original stewards, we commit ourselves this day to more than words, but actions that acknowledge and embrace our responsibility to take restorative action in solidarity with indigenous communities and projects that cause the life of this sacred ground and all its inhabitants to flourish. We affirm and recommit to the breathing life and to the dry bones of injustice and all that we teach, preach, and do for the sake of those who have gone before us and for the sake of the generations that are yet to come. Ashe. For the sake of the land, for the honor of the ancestors, for the life of our Mother Earth and all of her children, we say Aho, Ache, and, and Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite you to please stand with us as we sing our opening song, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Oh, 
the mountain, my mortals smoke. two of our students from the contextual thinking class, uh, Mo King and um, Jenny Hughes, if you, John, John sorry, <laughs> Jenny John. Um, and this is a, a poem that is rendered from The Color Purple, the musical. Dear God, dear, God, dear, star, dear star, dear tree, dear, tree, dear sky, sky, dear people, people dear, dear everything, everything dear, God. dear God. God, God is inside is me and, and everyone else. else. That what that was, was ever will be, will be, I came into this world, world with, God. with God. And when I and finally, when I finally looked, looked inside, inside, I found I it. Found it. Just as, Just as close, close my breath, my breath is, is big, big. Rising, rising like the sun, is the hope, is the hope that, sets that sets us free. Your heart, your heartbeat, makes my makes heart my heart beat when we when share, we love. share love. Like, like a play like, like, like a honey, like a, honey bee, bee, like a water like a waterfall, all all a part, a part of me. me. Like the color, like the color purple. purple. Where do Where it come, do it come from? from? Now my now eyes, my are, eyes open. are open. Look, look what, God, what has God has done. It takes, it takes a grain of love to, to make a mighty tree. Even the, even smallest, the smallest voice can make, can a, make harmony. a harmony. Like a drop, like a drop of water in the river, in the river high. high. There are there miracles. Are miracles for you, for and, you I. and I. Like a like a play of play of horn, horn, like a honey, like a, honey, bee, like a, water, like a waterfall, all, all a part, part of me. me. Like the color, like the color purple, purple, where do where it come, do it come from? from? Now, now my eyes are open. open. Look, look what God, what God has done. done. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that reading. I invite you to stand once again as we sing our next song. It's an older one, but I think it hits the soul just the same. Pass me not. Oh, Savior. 
first church song that I had in my memory. Mm -hmm. I was probably about five years old going down south. You hear about it later, but it's a song that I remember hearing the old folks sing mm -hmm. from the choir. Mm -hmm. And it's my earliest memory hearing that song. Amen, so amen. amen to that and amen to uh, the memories of our ancestors 
who have deposited legacies of faith in us that we're able to um, enjoy and live out today. Amen? Amen. Now's our time for our scriptures and our readings. Our scripture today comes from the sixth chapter in the book of Matthew, verses 25 through 34. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns. Hmm. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? Hmm. And why do you worry about clothes? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how the lilies in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work. Mm. and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all of his splendor wasn't dressed like one of these. No. Oh, no. Mm. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, oh. won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Mm -hmm. Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat, or what are we going to drink, or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, decide first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as all. Therefore, Stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. It Each day has enough trouble of its own. Our second reading comes from the book, The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Listen, God loves everything you love and a mess of stuff you don't. <laughs> But more than anything else, God loves admiration. Mm -hmm. You saying God vain, I asked. Mm -hmm. Nah, she said, not vain, just wanting to share a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think it pisses God off if you walk by the color purple in a field somewhere and don't notice it. It definitely mm -hmm. does. This is the word of God for the people of God. Okay. Thanks be to God. <laughs> You've already heard from uh, our preacher today, but allow me to formally uh, introduce him. Reverend Dr. Masia Evans is an educator, artist, and ordained minister who has dynamically engaged the topics of religious pluralism, leadership development, and social change through writings, lectures, performances, and workshops. He, pres he presently serves as the pastor of the first United Methodist Church in Roswell, California, with a focus on youth empowerment, community organizing, and interfaith initiatives. He holds a doctorate in ministry from Claremont School of Theology and an MDiv right here from PSR. Uh, <laughs> that's right. He is married um, and uh, has two daughters right now. Oh, yeah. Two daughters. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> And originally, he's from Hartford, Connecticut. More importantly, I've been able to get to know Masha over the course of this semester, co-teaching, contextual um, thinking, and it's just a pleasure for us to have him bring this word this morning. Amen. Amen. Before we go any further, let's just have a, a brief word of prayer. Dear God, in these Moments that we have together, I pray that you will open our hearts so that we may receive that which you have for us to receive. And as always, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
It is so good to be here. PSR is in my blood. Um, I've been a part of this community since, in some form or fashion, since 2007. Um, since when my daughter, who is now turning 15, just turned 15, my oldest daughter, um, was still in the belly. And I remember going into that office and um, the director of admissions at the time saying, I see that your wife is pregnant. Why don't you leave your name there so we can pray? This is before I even knew I was coming here. I was huh. discerning. And it was that act of prayer, that invitation that had me you know, decide that this was a place that I wanted to be. Mm. Not only for a couple of degrees and a certificate, but a whole lot of debt that <laughs> Uncle, Sam, Uncle Sam is now knocking on my door. Amen. You know, in many ways, my journey to PSR in this pulpit within this kind of a Gothic inspired whole brick hall begins in a small church in Southern Maryland. Hold on. Indeed. Sorry, I want to spotlight you, but I yeah. got to go to the slides. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there it is. It begins in that small church right there, the church where I heard the song Pass Me Not. In a Toni Morrison type of way, it is a place of deep memory. I remember my trips down south as a kid in this seemingly ancient church in Maryland, Cooper's United Methodist Church it's called. I remember the sun bleached white paint barely holding on to that little wooden structure that sat down road that sat in the lowlands at the bottom of the hill near Hall Creek. I remember stopping at the top steps just before entering those double doors and smelling the distinct air of a Maryland summer. And from there, I surveyed the soil of my parents and my ancestors, this rural landscape of farm plots spotted with old oaks and peeling birches and deep pine woods. I remember how it seemed like those old trees released the whispers of passed on spirits that passed on up those church steps past me, passing through those church doors and entering into the no time with those like me who still lived in their bodies. I remember seeing myself surrounded by this type of kaleidoscopic vision of black and brown faces set in sincerity as they swayed and moaned to old hymns accompanied by the gospel cadence of a piano positioned prominently up front with the wooden altar that had the maroon padding for kneeling. <laughs> Pass me not, O oh, gentle savior. They sung, tried songs and prayed a true prayers with open hearts and closed eyes. They praised God with raised hands that pointed heavenwards, puncturing the thick summer air with their summons in the small space of that sanctuary. I remember seeing this crisp white uniform of an elderly usher, an ancient lady with gray eyes with, who extended her wrinkled black cupped hand to my young cheek saying, child, I declare you're gonna look just like your granddaddy. I can still hear the creaking sounds of wooden pews holding the shifting bodies of those whose bodies toil too long in hot backhoe fields or as domestics in Miss So-and-So's house up road. Oh, yeah. I can still feel the breeze of paper fans sponsored by some funeral home <laughs> moving the humid air the picture of Martin Luther King Jr. or praying hands moving yes. back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. In our class contextual thinking, all of this deep memory speaks to what is most authentic and foundational and formational in my perspectives. These are my roots, something that I describe in my doctoral work as black folk religious traditions. This is a legacy of spirituality from my ancestors, a people with a creative and irrepressible faith that was forged in fire. Those who knew deep down within their souls that God is always with us and always trying to tell us something. Yes. These traditions are holy. And the color purple 
is one of those works of art that shines a light on this beautiful religious expression. The acclaimed novel written by Alice Walker back in 1982 remains a seminal womanist work centered around a black woman's struggle for empowerment. The story documents the traumas and the gradual triumph of Celie, a black teenage girl raised in Jim Crow era Georgia. And it highlights the themes of liberation, full community restoration, love, and the wisdom that affirms that the undivided sacred presence is present, whether it is in the church house or the juke joint. Well. In 1985, there was a famous film adaptation that featured stars like Whoopi Goldberg and Danny Glover and Oprah Winfrey. Needless to say, the book, and especially the movie, filled with all of its quotable quotes, <laughs> quickly became and remains like sacred texts within the current Black and African American folk religious language. Further, there's these iconic images. One of note shows the, the characters Seely and Suge Avery walking in this vast field of purple wildflowers. Taking her cues from nature, Suge, the seemingly unlikeliest of theologians, opines about God. And while noticing or considering the flowers of the field, she beautifully and bluntly says, I think it pisses God off yeah. <laughs> if you walk by the color purple in a field somewhere and don't notice it. Is that all right? Yeah. If I pre it's, I say, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of this organic exchange, in some traditions they call it almost mother wit, right? This organic exchange of spiritual wisdom out in a field when I visited Israel-Palestine a little more than three years ago. Near Nazareth, there lies the ruins of this a city called Sepphoris. This ancient city was important because Joseph and his famous son, Jesus, was probably conscripted by Herod Antipas to rebuild this first century jewel of Galilee city that sits on top of a hill overlooking a valley low. I took this next picture that you see because for miles all around the site, there are these vast fields. And these fields that Jesus most likely wandered through would have undoubtedly sparked his youthful imagination. It would have later from a place of deep memory informed his teachings. Our verse today talks about worry and it comes from his famous Sermon on the Mount. In it, Jesus says many things including look at the birds of the sky they don't sow seeds or harvest grain or gather crops into barns and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them and like Shug Avery who took her cues from nature and drawing upon his deep memory of his hometown fields around Nazareth Jesus then says notice and in some versions we know the word consider how the lilies of the field grow they do not wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon, in all of his splendor, wasn't dressed like one of these. Jesus is finished his thought with, by this a rhetorical question. Now, if God dresses the fields so beautifully, wow. even though it is alive today and gone tomorrow, uh. won't God do much more for you? Mm. Now the audience who would have gotten this knew that what interpreters later labeled as the lilies of the field referred to these wildflowers of rich color in the gladiolus and the iris species. The Hastings Bible Dictionary says that these flowers are ones that most likely grew among the grain, often overtopping it and illuminating the broad wheat fields of Galilee with their various shades of, get this, pinkish purple <laughs> to deep violet purple. So Jesus' invocation of the lilies of the fields and Alice Walker's The Color Purple offers us an insightful metaphor into God's grace. This is particularly relevant in times when worry is not only present, but warranted. I'm talking about those sometimes moments when we 
cannot easily discern the where's, the what's, the why's, and especially the how's. Yes. You see, Jesus knew the pressures of the poor and oppressed in occupied first century Palestine in the same way that God knows the pressures that we are facing today yes. in our community, in our nations, and in our world. Worry sometimes is warranted when you consider that from Ukraine, you see the flags over there, to northern Ethiopia, mm. the world is rife with war. Yes. But how immigrants are treated like pawns and not finding love here on these huddled mass shores. Mm. Worry is warranted when even on this election day, yeah. it is more than worrying actually yeah. to know that yeah. democracy itself is on the ballot here, yeah. battling the cancerous cause of autocratic conceptions that contradict the common good. Worry sometimes is warranted when you have an accreditation visit, amen? <laughs> or even look at the witness of the church and see the gospel diminish to slogans with some folks yelling about banning books but remaining silent in the face of anti-Semitic and anti-Black rhetoric and violence and systemic injustice and theologically co-signing the petulance in our politics that gives right. voice to violence that deepens divisions and cynically separates. Yeah. And sometimes the warranted worry takes on these personal dimensions. Mm -hmm. Like when one begins to question if they're ever going to get through the problems that they are facing. Mm -hmm. Like Seely in The Color Purple. Sometimes you cannot help but wonder if you can overcome the forces in life that seem to conspire Yes. to tire and extinguish your sense of light, your sense of joy, and, your, and, and put a ceiling over your own sense of what you think is possible. Mm -hmm. These type of worries are real. Yes. And these natural feelings of anxiety arises from the concerns of our life and affirm our humanness. Oh. However, I believe that when Jesus says, do not worry, well, we are not being taught to act as if what is happening is not. That's no. Right. no. All right. That's true. We are being taught to not get stuck in worry, to not let it have power over us. There's an old blues song that talks about don't let the devil ride. Yeah. <laughs> right? For if we quiet ourselves long enough, then we can begin to hear a truth emerging through worry's miring myths. We can begin to hear the whisper of Suge Avery. Shook Avery in that field of wildflowers. Mm. Or of Jesus' voice on that mount long ago saying, consider. Consider. Mm. consider the flowers of the field and the purple shade of God's grace by knowing, as my spiritual mentor often says, just because things are out of your control doesn't mean that things are out of God's control. Mm. And this knowing releases us to show up and confront all the worrying things that surround us yes. in our nation, yes. in our communities, in our world, without becoming overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Consider the flowers of the field in the purple shade of God's grace by knowing that even when churches fail, mm -hmm. or all the models of seminary die, mm -hmm. God still lives, yeah. and people gathered by the gospel of justice and joy can innovate and create a new thing like how PSR has, yes. and do good, yes. and still minister to, as Howard Thurman once said, those whose backs are up against the wall, yeah, yeah. while remaining true to a tradition of boldness that is forever unafraid. Uh -huh. Consider, Consider the flowers of the field and the purple shades of God's grace by knowing that the evidence of God's presence, especially in our lowest of low moments, may show up in those around us, but also in the stars, and in the trees, yes. in the sky, in the everything. It shows up as was recited by the poem we heard earlier in the realization that God is on the inside, just as close as breath is to me. Oh, like a blade of corn, like a honeybee, like a waterfall, it's all a part of me. Oh, like the color purple, where does it come from? May our eyes be open to look what God has done. Uh -huh. You see, in all these considerings, <laughs> in the middle of all these shades of purple, 
Well, I know that God not only sees our needs, but is also always willing to provide for them. Hallelujah. This allows us to have the assurance such that we can stop worrying about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. And this allows us to notice the pops of the color purple that surrounds, which is the grace that not only sustains the birds and the flowers, but the grace that sustains our very lives. This is a grace that we can depend on in those sometimes moments when increase the lengthening shadows of warranted worries. And this is a grace that allows us to feel the spirit moving in our hearts in such a way that we could truly know from a place deep down in our souls that no matter what is going on, God will always be with us. In fact, closing now, this message was spoken, this message that I speak of today was given with a lot less words seven years ago by the great hip hop artist Kendrick Lamar when he said in the intro of one of his most popular songs, quoting from the sacred text of the color purple's character, Sophia, he said, all my life I has to fight. Uh -huh. He goes on to say, hard times like Yah, bad trips like Yah, Nazareth. He then proclaims, and I'm paraphrasing, because we are in the seminary's church house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messed up, homie, you messed up, but if God got us there, we gonna be all right. right. Yes. We gonna be all right, family. We are far away in time and space from Jesus giving a sermon in first century Palestine and far away in time and space from Sealy in Jim Crow, Georgia. But as sure as that quaint Methodist church in the country parts of Southern Maryland lives in my deep memory, I can testify to the power of considerance. And in those sometimes moments when we begin to worry, if you have eyes to see the color purple of grace that surrounds us, then we can be strengthened in the promise yes. that God has still got us. And because of it, as the prophet Kendrick Lamar says, we gonna be all right. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. But at this time, we're going to move into a moment of prayer, a moment of allowing all of this message to kind of seep into the soil of our hearts. Um, what you will hear in song is the poem that you heard recited earlier. It's actually the reprise in The Color Purple, the musical. And what I want you to do is just settle with yourself and hear the song, allow the words and the movement and the music to find a place of rest within your soul. And sometime within that, if you feel so led, I'm gonna invite you to come forward. You have the pens in your hand. I'm gonna invite you to come forward. There's post-it notes that are up on the altar. And I want you to write two things. Don't worry about getting it perfect. It's, so, you know, two things. Something that reminds you of God's grace. If that language doesn't penetrate, something you're grateful for, okay? Something that reminds you of God's grace or something you're grateful for. And the second thing, you can put it on the back row underneath. One thing that you can do this week to extend God's grace in this world. Mm. Let me flip that. How can you be the color purple for someone else today? Wow. So those are the two things that I want you to write on that. Okay? And when you're done with that, we're going to have you put it there. I want you to just to hold it in your hands for now. We're going to put it up here for a second, but just keep holding it in your hands. Okay. So let's take a breath. Thank you. 
Find your breath. Find your breath. I found it just, just as close as my breath is to me. This time, if you could take your piece of paper, and if you're able, if you can just extend it in the air. As you extend it in the air, I want you to feel that you are surrounded by the color purple. And it's an affirmation of God's grace and God's presence with us today. Amen. Amen. The assurance of God's presence, we also have the confidence of knowing that God hears our prayers. As we prepare to close, I invite you to speak the names or the situations that you desire to offer to God in prayer that we may hold them collectively as a community. Name, person. Healing for this nation. Healing for everyone. Soul after Very lucky. The strength to trust and not worry. Yeah. 
sense of clarity in a time of turmoil. Amen. Prayer for true liberation. Dear God, in your mercy, we know that you've heard our prayers, heard the prayers both spoken and the prayers that remain in, on the silent palate of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Heard the prayers from within these four walls and you know the prayers that are being prayed from beyond them. For all of that, we are so grateful that you gather up all of those prayers in your everlasting arms of care. Be with us today for we know that your grace looks like divine accompaniment through all of life's circumstances, and that your presence arrives with compassion and comfort, healing and hope. Amen. Amen. Please join us in our closing responsive prayer by, led by Reverend Dr. Rios. You'll find the words on the last page of your pen. And I'd like to take this time to thank Reverend Miss Ann, her team, uh, Reverend Dr. Masia Evans, and students who have been, who were part of the planning of this service. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And Miss Ann for doing it every week. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all. Love of God, God, God is heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name, echo through the universe. universe. We are the justice and follow all the universe. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings, your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. Of all your reign and the glory of the power that is love. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. So I invite you to stand with me as we sing our closing. Oh, yes. It's a couple announcements. Yes. Sorry. Uh, we are, good afternoon. We have uh, uh, two events this uh, at CLGS and as always they're online optimistic and open to all. Today William Martin and Dwayne Radcliffe will be speaking on queer autobiography. That's at 12:30 today online of course and then Thursday our Jewish query series has Nancy Otto, Joan Lefkowitz and Kate Stilley Steiner speaking on the uh, film uh, Prognosis Notes on Living uh, End of Life uh, uh, documentary which is really wonderful. So that's Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific. And would you consider dispelling worry just a little more today? Would you consider listening to our latest episode of Change Happens Now? It's an incredibly beautiful deep dive into inviting play into your leadership and into your life. It features PSR alumnus Reverend Adrian Thorne. She is a senior minister at Riverside Church in New York City. Mm -hmm. In five seasons, it's one of the most hopeful, lighthearted, playful conversations, and it's 36 minutes. I invite you to deep dive. You can listen to it on our website and on Spotify. Thanks. We have an announcement from Academic Dean Tara Weeks. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. <laughs> We invite you to never, never, not to not miss Dean T this month. This month. November 14th, 14th at 12.30 at 12 30 Pacific. Pacific. This Dean's team will be hosted by our by Dean, 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 Dean
Abraham. Abraham. We have the author here from the, from the M.B. theologian, Dr. M. M. Don Copeland. Professor Copeland is an award-winning writer and has lectured extensively across the world. Join us on Monday, November 14th at 12.30. This event will be hybrid and a registration will be sent out. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick couple of words. First, again, a word of gratitude to everybody involved in the WASC accreditation process, <laughs> and that involved everybody. So thank you for all that work and, and planning preparation, and it was a good visit. And I want to just recognize uh, some folks that are on campus with us today for our Ignite team. Uh, we got uh, Arlene Mendoza, who is on our Board of Trustees, going to help us lead a bit of a... <laughs> who is uh, also coming in to help uh, it, with the planning as we think about the implementation of our Ignite uh, it, our ecosystem and the Ignite process. So thank you for being with us today. And good to see you, Jonathan, back on campus. <laughs> Uh, one final announcement you'll see on the back of your program, and we'll be sending this out on Wednesday, November the 16th, from 12.30 to 2 p.m., uh, Pastor Kamal and I will be doing a workshop called Grief, Grace, and Growth, uh, Navigating the Waters of Deep Transition. So it will be online, and we'll send registration for that. And thank you again so much to the Contextual Thinking class. Yeah. Did you have another? Please. Just a, so the, the PSR Run Club uh, is up and running. Uh, we are meeting today at 510 in the quad most Tuesdays. Um, so all levels welcome. Come through. And you can join by Zoom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can run a straight somewhere else. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. I invite you to please stand as we prepare for our closing song. You might be familiar with it, This Little Light of Mine. Mm -hmm. I think if this, what this world needs is a little bit of light, let us go with that. The other thing, too, is um, I encourage you to the, the sheets of paper that you have. Um, you can do one or two things with it. You can either leave it right up here at the, at the fount, right? Or you can put it on you, like the I voted sticker. Yeah. And if somebody asks you about it, you have an excuse to talk about the grace that sustains you. Amen? Yeah. All right. sustaining grace and may we be for everyone that we encounter vessels of love and hope 
And now may you go with God and may you go in God's peace. Amen.